God will ultimately deliver this world regardless of what your experience is on this earth and whether he has delivered you from that particular uh, difficulty mm -hmm. that you had at a particular time, mm -hmm. ultimately he will deliver you from the very presence of evil forever. Mm. So when he calls... Hello everyone and welcome to the TBP channel, The Biblical Perspective. And thank you for joining us today. And we're in our series of studies in the book of Psalms. And today's topic is entitled, The Lord Hears and Delivers. And before we go into it, Pedro, I will pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for hearing us and for delivering us, Lord, which is the title of our study. And I pray that this message will go out far and wide to those who need to hear what you do in your courts above. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Do you know what's interesting? Um, there are so many people who are praying, right? And I find it intriguing that we're in the 21st century and they're praying to God to hear them and to heal them from their situations. And um, I want you to explain to me, Pedro, why is there so much pain and hope expressed in the Psalms and both at the same time? This is a very important question. And it is because within the biblical corpus, yes. and you rightly said in the Psalms, within the biblical corpus, the book of yes. Psalms is the most expressive in yeah. the most expressive and insightful in terms of the emotional, psychological, and spiritual needs mm. of a broken human race. Wow. And broken. it is at the same time where you will find more vividly the ultimate source of hope and comfort that this broken mm -hmm. human race is longing for okay in the psalms that's why you have both at the same time there now if you read for me an example of this psalm 34 verses 15 and 17 please the eyes of the lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry the face of the lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth Okay, 15 and 17. Yes, 50. Oh, oh, the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. So these psalms uh, present, yes. presents two things, two elements that we mm. need to retain okay. in here. The first one is that, first of all, people who live in obedience to God mm -hmm. do experience trouble in their lives. I'm glad you've said that. All right? Yes. And the psalm is telling you this. Okay. Okay. Yes. So that's the first thing that okay. you need to retain. The second thing is there is actually no situation that they can face and God has no power to save them from. Now that's comforting. Both yeah. of those are expressed right here in this psalm. Yeah. Now, um, God has, there, there, there is no power above the power of God. And when it says God delivers them from all, you might want to put a question mark there mm, and okay. say, is that really the, the case. case now remember i told you the psalm is telling you this what they are telling you here is god is the ultimate power god is the ultimate source and there is nothing he cannot save you from mm. it doesn't necessarily tells you that you are going to be delivered from every single thing. And I will expound on this. If you read for me, um, Psalm 139, and you read verses 8 to 12 for me, please. 
Um, if I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I, make, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day, the darkness and the light are both a light to thee. Okay, now read. Okay. Yeah. So, so, what you realize here yeah. is the hand of God, which is everywhere. Well, darkness and light are both a light to thee. And there is no situation mm -hmm. from which anyone can hide. can hide. No. No. Before God. No, not at all. The psalmist understands that. And he is by this then saying, there is nothing that God cannot do if he decides That's to do right. it. Mm -hmm. And right here in Psalm um, 139, that what you read? Yes. 139 verses 8 to 12. Yes. Right. Um, God saves not just because he can, mm. but he saves because he cares. Yeah. Oh. This, this is different. Yeah. God does not say, because lots of people do things because they have the power to do, or even mm. other gods in other, you know, um, mythologies, yeah. they will do things because they have the power to do it. But when yeah. it comes to, I like that. When it comes to delivering, mm. it's not because he has the power, but because he, can. he cares. That's beautiful. And that throws another perspective on it. To be honest, Pedro, tell me. Because people think he just does it because he can, and he and he doesn't do things because he can. But it's the caring that's the foundation of him doing or not doing. And this is why in the psalmist expression of their emotions, you will find at the same time pain and hope. And hope. Mm. The yeah. hope is not based on, the pain is based on what you experience Experience. as being in this life. World, world of sin. However you feel at that time that yeah. the situation is. But the hope comes from you knowing that God cares, not that he has the power. Because many people can help you not go hungry True. because they have the money to mm. feed you what they want. Mm. But if they care, they will. Yeah. Do that, you see? Absolutely. All right. I'm glad that you... So that's why, glad you at that the out. same time, to answer your question in a definite way, you have pain and hope mm. expressed in the psalms. Wonderful, thank you. And viewers, I hope that you got a blessing from what I've just, uh, just heard too. So we mentioned about this pain and hope. Um, right, so if the psalmist is convinced that God cares, this is what I meant to say, right? Why would there be so much lament and despair in the psalms, right? And for instance, there's one in Psalm 43, I would like to go there with you. Okay. Right? Okay. So, Psalm 43, 3. Oh, send out the light and the truth. Let them lead me, let them bring me unto thy holy hill, to thy tabernacles. And I want to jump to 80, 88, 14, because I want to have a look at that as well. Because I think it's important just to get a bit of clarity, a bit of clarity on this. Um, about this lamentation and caring of God. Lord, why castest thou off my soul? Why hidest thou thy face from me, if God cares? Okay, so I, I understand your question and it is legitimate. You asking if God cares and mm -hmm. they know that God cares, why are they lamenting and lamenting despairing? And, 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 and despairing like this especially in the book of psalms yeah it? it's all over the place all right okay uh, this is a good question and this again allows us to tap into what we've already said okay concerning what the book of psalms really are mm -hmm. what, what what the psalms yeah. are now 
It is true that there is a lot of that happening, but remember, they are only expressing deep emotions and concerns that are inherent mm. to who they are as human beings. You live on this earth. I began to say in our first study that there is no human being mm. who does not experience fear and danger, mm. hope, and, 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 and comfort in this life, whether you're a believer or you're not a believer. But it all comes from where you are at that time true so you asking why is there so much of yeah. this it's because people are so much in that place mm. are you with me mm -hmm. it's a reflection of reality the, but it does not stop there for instance if you go back to the very song that you read but this time verse 5 of 43 i'll show you okay 43 verse 5. You read 43, 3, I believe, or 2. But two. now read verse 5. For that, me, okay, please. right. Why art thou cast down on my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the help of my countenance and my God. So you see in verse okay. 2, you had that expression and that, that um, impression that he was lamenting and 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 all of that he was in despair but right here you have a sense of that but straight after that you yeah. have a different sense of what is happening here so david in this psalm is speaking to himself why are you my soul cast down within me mm. he is speaking to himself from from what he is feeling but from what he is feeling he is also speaking to mm, himself or by saying my soul from an experiential perspective <laughs> yeah. to say you have no reason to That's be right. in this situation because I have experienced that after feeling the way I feel or after you feel the way you feel this is amazing. He's speaking yeah. to himself as if to somebody else. So he's questioning and answering himself, isn't he? No, 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 no. The way he does it, he's, he's speaking to himself as if he's speaking to somebody else, mm -hmm. but he takes the place of the one who has gone through the experience and tells the other, look, I know you're feeling the way you're feeling now, but know that this is not the end of it because the Lord will come and save you, mm -hmm. except that he's speaking to himself. Yeah. Are you with me yeah. putting into contrast how he feels mm -hmm. and what he, he knows, knows. Yeah. about God that's right are you with me mm -hmm. so the lamenting that you see here is an expression of where he is at that time but he doesn't stay there okay Mm -hmm. Because there is more it's an understanding of uh, um, than the lamenting here, and yeah. and the psalm. It is true you read Psalm eighty-eight, verse fourteen. Yes, that it is true that this entire psalm uh, eighty-eight is just lament. It is, and and Crying. you don't have. You don't have that part that you see in 43, in 43, 5. Five. Yeah. But remember that the book of Psalms mm. is amazingly put together so that you can have one psalm mm. here that is full of lament and despair and the, and the next one that is attached to it in much the same way that you have it in Psalm 43, verse mm. 2, and in verse 5. Yes. Are you with me? Now, I want you to read for me Psalm 40, okay. uh, 1 to 3. Yeah. So. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me, and, I, and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and establish my goings. And he put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear the Lord and trust in 
the Lord. So you see how this balances yes. Psalm 88 that is full of just questions and despair if you read the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Now read also verse um, Psalm 55 verse 22 for me please. Okay. Cast thy burdens upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee and he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. You see that could be right in the spirit of Psalm 43 verse yes, 5 could. when he's speaking to himself mm -hmm. as to a third person. Yes. You have a strong sense and a strong and definite sense here of God's assurance mm -hmm. that he is conveying to his soul to say, you don't have to worry because my Lord cares. Mm -hmm. You may feel like this now. But from experience, because I have gone through that, I'm telling you, my brother, speaking to himself mm -hmm. in, verse, in, in, in verse 5 of 43, which you can apply elsewhere. I'm telling you, my brother, I'm telling you, my sister, God will come through for you because I have experienced that you don't have to be desp in despair. Mm -hmm. or afraid. You may feel like this now, but you don't have to be in despair. That's an experiential knowledge mm -hmm. expressed about God's care. Yeah. Now, I want you to read now Psalm 91, verses 2 to 7, please. Okay. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His true shall be thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. To um, seven. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. So you see, it is clear, mm -hmm. because your question was, if he knows that God That's cares, right. why is there so much lamentation mm -hmm. and despair? It is clear from this that he knows that the Lord cares, and he knows that the Lord is who he said he is and the Lord hears and delivers those who cry out to him okay. but he also knows that for the Lord to answer those who cry out to him in despair yeah. they first need to be in despair <laughs> so they need to go through the experience that's, an that's why yeah. so much lamentation is recorded in the psalms wow. but along the songs of praise thanksgiving gratitude and exaltation yeah. for God's deliverance. Wonderful, Pedro. I love it, love it, love it. And it brings the Psalms to life when we discuss it in such a way. Um, how can the use of imagery from biblical times supposed to relate to us as Christians today in the context of God's care for us? What, what can you say about that? Okay. Any, any I, examples? I, I think that you, you, you're you referring to the last, song, the last song that we just read where yes. there's lots of imagery of, of, of refuge, fortress, mm, and so on and so forth. And shelter, and, okay. protection. Yeah. So it's not so much the imagery okay. uh, that is an issue here. Okay. No, no, no. Um, in my opinion, at least, uh, the question is, do we understand today All right. that we have this need mm. for protection and security as much as these people had it back then? Back then? Yeah. I think we do because there is no way you will live in the world that is ours on a daily basis, oh. watching the news going out of your house, knowing what's happening in your family or within, mm. within yourself, True. that you will not have a sense of your need mm -hmm. for protection and security. Mm -hmm. So never mind the imagery that you have there. They were relating to 
what was around okay. them, but it came from a place of the same need that you have mm -hmm. today. Are you with me? Wonderful. Yes. So never mind about the imagery. Right. Just think about what is behind it. And behind it is the fear, it's the danger, uh -huh. it is the oppression, it is the abuse, it is the exploitation, and all these other things that still mm -hmm. characterize your experience in this world and your need for deliverance. Mm -hmm. You with me? But I want you to read uh, Psalm 17 verses 7 to 9 for me, please. Okay, show thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou that saveth by thy right hand, them which put their trust in, in thee from those that rise up against thee, uh, I'm sorry, that rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of thy eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings from the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies which compass me about. Okay, so this is another. Yes, it uh, is. I would say passage that uses imagery here in verse Again. 8, particularly. Yes. We might not understand fully. Uh, that imagery here, but we can understand what is at play here. Mm -hmm. When the text says, kick me like the apple of your eyes, wow. I don't necessarily know what is an apple of, <laughs> of, of an eye and how you keep it, mm. but I can understand here that sight is a precious thing that people want to protect because it is absolutely yes. essential. So, you know, you, you want to protect that. Now, uh, the other thing that is there is under the shadow, like in Psalm 91, being under the shadow, shadow of, the, of almighty, the Almighty. Now, you, 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 you were at school, and you know at school you find two groups of people. One group of people who like to bully people, mm. and another group of people who is bullied yeah. by the people who like to bully people. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? So, if you have somebody who bullies you, mm. and then two things can happen. You can defend yourself and not be bullied, or you can stand in the shadow of one who will defend you against the bullies. Mm. That is, standing in the shadow is he will cover the one who will take your, defan your defense, will have you stand behind yeah. him, and he will stand in between you and the bully. So you stand in the shadow. The imagery is there. But if you stand in the shadow of the all mighty mm -hmm. who shall you fear not one soul because he is the almighty mm -hmm. there Pro is nothing. protector and deliverer absolutely mm. and that imagery you may think is something that is um, out of date and irrelevant and far in the future mm. but we can see that imagery in the Bible, biblical times, yeah. is also relevant now, even in our experience as Christians. I want you to read for me 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 to 4, please. Okay. Moreover, brethren, I will not that ye be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all did eat the same spiritual meat, and all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our example to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither ye be idolaters, as some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. 
neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. So you, you read one to four? Oh, I overread. All right, I thought so. Right, okay. yes. So, so I'll, I'll invite people to stop at four. At stop at four. <laughs> yeah, because what we, we're saying here is yes. Paul is not in a psalmist, but in the bit that yeah. you have between one and four, he uses quite a lot of imagery there. But the imagery that he's using, he's using it within the context of Christianity. He's using it within the context of you and I yes, trying to understand who Jesus is for us. Are you with me? Yeah. So that means Christianity and the world of the psalmist back long before David that's right are actually intricately linked yes. and the symbolism is used without any issue because you through that imagery mm. as a Christian yeah. understands the symbolism yes of the reality mm -hmm. that may not make sense what i'm trying to say no no but what it, i mean it, by that yes, it is does. by just looking at it mm -hmm. you can see the symbolism yes. employed here but the reality behind that symbolism it will not stop you from seeing it now if you look at the experience of israel this is what he is referring to yes. here who does not understand through that that we are concerned yes. as Christians? All right. Yeah? Yeah. So the imagery is relevant there um, because the message mm -hmm. is the same, which is God is the one who provides salvation mm -hmm. god is the one who provides deliverance god, god is the one who provides protection and that can be understood fully whatever side you're on that's right whether it is the True. old testament or the, or the new testament amen that is wonderful so pedro could you give us an example of that of that connection between the imagery in the Old and the New Testament? Yeah, no problem. Can you read for me Psalm 114, please? Okay. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah was in his sanctuary and Israel his dominion. The sea saw it and fled. Jordan was driven back. The mountains skipped like rams and the little hills like lambs. What ail thee, O thou sea? that thou fleddest, thou Jordan, that thou wast driven back, ye mountains that ye skip like rams, and ye little hills like lambs, tremble thou earth at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, which turned the rock into, into a standing water, the flint into a fountain of waters. You see, you can already see the connection in terms of imagery right. between the text that Paul wrote in 1 okay. Corinthians 10, 1 to 4, That's right. and what the psalmist is saying here. Mm. And to go further with this, we need to understand and see because it's actually quite palpable throughout the um, Bible corpus that the, the historical yes. experience of Israel being delivered from Egypt has become yes. a, a biblical motive mm -hmm. throughout the, the Bible for God's ability to deliver, mm -hmm. to hear and to deliver. Uh, for instance, if you look at um, verse 2, I, I know we, we're not going to read it, um, but I'm just mentioning it. The idea of God's people being his sanctuary. That's right. And being the, that means God's people is the place where God dwells. Mm -hmm. I think um, um, verse 
2 says um, the people is his sanctuary and his place of dominion. That's right. Th that is a language that simply conveys the idea of God dwelling That's in the right. middle of these people mm -hmm. and the people of God being the boundary of his kingdom on earth. And we will say, say let me make them a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. That's the idea. Yes. Now, that imagery which is real mm -hmm. in the what you would call the Old Testament is also real mm -hmm. in what you call the New Testament because this is the church in the midst of which God establishes his yes. kingdom and expands it in this world. He did. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So the imagery and the symbolism is relevant. In verse 8, I believe of um, Psalm 119, you have there a correlation with, I believe, verse 4 of... First Corinthians verse, First um, Corinthians ten, which uh, speaks about Christ being the rock yeah. from which we drink. That's right. The, that imagery comes from Psalm one hundred and fourteen. Are you okay. With yeah. And it identifies the rock from yes. which the water, the water runs from forth as being Christ being with them, mm. which again is the yes. idea of Christ dwelling in the midst of them, again. which is further is the idea of the, and we don't get that often, the divinity of Christ. Mm. Are you with me? Mm. This goes Far. So these are um, I, I, connections that you can see there within the context of God hearing yes. and delivering, because that's what we're talking about. The Lord hears now, and delivers. Yeah, there, there is, because God delivered his people mm -hmm. from Egypt. But he had to right? hear them cry out first. In much the same way, mm -hmm. if also you cry out to him mm -hmm. he will deliver you from sin mm. because egypt also is used as an imagery sin of sin. for sin and god delivers from both yes can you see the connection yes. now there is also another motive um, that is in use in the bible and that is the motive of the sanctuary read for me some Ver, um, 20 verses 1 and 2 please okay the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble the name of the God of Jacob defend thee send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion okay and now read for me Hebrews chapter 9 verse 24 for Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Okay, and that is speaking about Jesus being in the sanctuary. The entire book yes. of Hebrews uh, works on this. Mm -hmm. But in verse in 1 and 2, or in verse 2 of Psalm 20, yeah. you hear about God sending help from the sanctuary yes, to did. deliver. Yeah. So that is, people are praying, and from the sanctuary where God is, yes. he sends out his help. Now, in Hebrews 9.24, where is Jesus? Jesus is in, in the, the sanctuary. sanctuary. And who is our helper? Who is our deliverer? Says God. Who is our savior? God. It is Jesus. Yes, it, it is, is Jesus who is our Savior, our Helper, our Deliverer. Yeah, Christ, yeah. But where does he do it from the right now? The sanctuary. He does it from the sanctuary. So can you see the, this other motive that is also there? Yes. And it expresses, in fact, the same care. All of that happens mm. because God cares, essentially. Yes. 
So although they are in their own separate context, yep. the imagery remains the same, consistent and constant. And the result of using it mm. is also the same. Now, the message of the goodness and the care of God yeah. and his ability to deliver mm -hmm. is the same regardless of, time, of time what time side of time and space you yeah. stand on. And that is wonderful. So we cannot think that the, those patriarchs of old we're getting it better than us. It's exactly the same because sin is on this world. Yeah, the same way he delivered Egypt. Yes. Sorry, he delivered his children from yeah. the corruption of Egypt. He can deliver you from the corruption of this life. And let me just add this to answer a previous question that you, you, you asked. God will ultimately deliver this world regardless of what your experience is on this earth and whether he has delivered you from that particular uh, difficulty mm -hmm. that you had at a particular time mm -hmm. ultimately he will deliver you from the very presence of evil forever mm. so when he call when you call he will answer and he delivers mm. always. Wonderful, thank you so much for that wonderful study. And viewers, I hope you got a blessing as much as I did. I always enjoy studying with um, Pedro. So, we invite you to subscribe to this channel and get others to subscribe too, and share this study with at least 10 people. I'm sure you can do that. And we have a live every Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. GMT time, where we discuss various topics that are relevant to the 21st century and from the biblical perspective. So please continue to meditate on the Word of God and do nothing but spend time, resources and energy, and you will get the fullness of the book of Psalms. So until next week, take care and have a blessed week. Bye-bye.